As a proud Canadian woman, it is my pleasure to introduce the Canadian Minister of Health, Leona Agluka. Minister Agluka was first elected to the House of Commons in October 2008, where she became the first Anuk to be sworn into the federal cabinet, serving as Minister of Health in every cabinet since. Prior to federal politics, Ms. Agluka served in the Nunavut Legislative Assembly as the member of the Legislative Assembly for Natalik. Ms. Agluka has always fought hard for Inuit issues that she was raised to believe in, which now includes HIV. I present the Honourable Minister, Ms. Agluka. It's an honor to be here to be co-hosting this session uh, with my good friend, Secretary Sabilia. On behalf of people health, living with HIV, I would like to interject. Your cuts to our health care are, are, are criminal and shameful. You have a shameful record on human rights. Your ideologically driven policy over evidence is criminal. On behalf of people living with HIV in Canada and those of us at risk, we turn your back to you. I would like to ask that all of you who agree with us join during our minister's speech. I can continue. Um, it's an honor again to be co-hosting this session with my good friend Secretary Sibelius, uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services of the United States. I would also like to thank my Canadian colleagues for joining me today at this session and I think many of the achievements we have accomplished in addressing HIV and AIDS in Canada are due in large part to the remarkable dedication and support of Canadians have demonstrated to this cause over the last few years. Again, I also want to take an opportunity to congratulate the Indigenous Aboriginal uh, Working Group on HIV and AIDS for a historic moment yesterday to be full participants of this international conference for the very first time in 30 years. And as a Canadian Health Minister, I am proud to have pushed for the cause so that we are full participants as Aboriginal people in this forum. Because of the significant hardship this epidemic has caused in developing countries in situations in North America, it's not often in the spotlight. So it's good to have a session where we look at how the epidemic is evolving on both sides of the 49th parallel and to assess where we stand. When HIV first emerged in North America 30 years ago, no treatment was available and many people who were infected in the early years of the epidemic died. Since the introduction of the uh, antiviral anti uh, uh, therapy in the 1990s, HIV has become for many a serious but manageable chronic condition. At the same time, our surveillance data tells us that despite ongoing investments in HIV prevention, new HIV infection continues to occur and rates are not declining. And not and in both Canada and the United States, there is still a high rate of new infections within certain groups, such as gay men and other men who have sex with men, and people who inject drugs. So despite our investments in the general uh, well-being of our populations, preventing HIV transmission remains an urgent public health priority. And to make meaningful progress, we will have to find ways to refocus our prevention programs to make them more effective, especially for those who are most at risk. The political declaration that both Canada and the United States joined last year at the UN high-level meeting recognized by consensus that the epidemic after every, affects every country differently and that is certainly true for our two countries. While we have a great deal in common, 
the composition of our country is very different, and so too is the epidemic. So nonetheless, Canada and the United States have a lot to learn from each other's successes and challenges by comparing our approaches. I hope that we can help each other become more effective at preventing new infections and addressing the treatment and the care and the support needs of those living with HIV and AIDS. It also provides us with an opportunity to look at ways that our two countries can continue our long-standing history of collaboration and to address HIV and AIDS in North America. Canada's federal initiative to address HIV and AIDS guides the funding of research projects supporting community groups which help us reach those who are most at risk and monitors HIV and AIDS through a national surveillance uh, system. We have programs designed for key populations such as the streets involved youth, women and gay men. We are working to address the social issues including accessible housing, income security, addictions and mental health that contribute to vulnerability for infectious disease. Canada demonstrates, uh, Democrat demonstrates response to the epidemic and our response as a member of the global community are equally important and we have helped to strengthen the healthcare system in developing countries and have played a lead role in mobilizing international action to support maternal, newborn and child's health. We have also started dialogues on emerging issues related to HIV and AIDS our annual policy dialogues have brought together international experts from governments, the academia and civil society to discuss a range of areas that impact HIV prevention, treatment, care and support. At the latest dialogue in January of this year, we partnered with the United States to host a dialogue on HIV, AIDS and mental health. This was a successful event that resulted in yesterday's satellite session addressing mental uh, disorder, the missing link to HIV, prevention, treatment, care, and support. Canada will continue supporting cutting-edge research, including this research, uh, research uh, for search for an effective vaccine. We are also continuing to partner with civil society and invest considerable resources to building community capacity to respond to HIV and AIDS. So we hope that we can accomplish even more in the next decade than we have in the last three decades so that we can increase the likelihood of having an AIDS-free generation in the foreseeable future. An important part of that work starts right here and with a hard look at what is happening in our regions with Canada and the United States. And I am pleased to be a part of that um, this afternoon. So, Queen Nami. exemption that allows insight to be open. Why don't you visit? We're here at the convention. Read the evidence. Everyone else here is. We have it available for you. Please take it. Visit us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, professors, community members. Push Thank you, Minister. Yeah, you don't need to put it down. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to move on with our program. Now it's my pleasure to introduce U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sebelius. In 2011, Forbes magazine.